Hey there, hello there, oh there, it's Jeff Kodajave. Welcome you to another Degrassiism. So, a week ago, I decided to put an effort together and do the top 10 Emma mistakes in Degrassi history because, you know, Emma was a big part of everything in Degrassi. She was the first main character when Degrassi Next Gen came onto our screens in 2002. So, for nine seasons, she was there. She did a lot of stuff, good and bad. So I decided to do the top, well, I did a post about the top Emma mistakes, and I almost had 20 of them. And then, you know, I got chastised for a few because, you know, all that. But, so I decided to do uh, 20, well, I, I think I ended up with 20 mistakes, right? Yeah. So I did five polls of four mistakes. So what I decided was the top two in each poll would be in the top 10, and then the other two would be basically offset. But as you will see when I talk about the poll results from those five polls, is that one of the polls actually had three with 50 plus. So I decided to change things up and move, put that third place, put, the, put the, th the, th the three of them in the top 10 in a sense. But then I decided to change my mind and add on, well, that one way 11, because 2 times 5 is 10. And then I added that third place one for 11. And then I decided to combine some season 8 ones into one whole one. So basically, that's what I plan to do and to make it a top 12 and then do two polls of six. So that's my plan. And now you'll get the explanation. All right, so as you can see, this was one of the poll ones that actually didn't have a specific season, but there were plenty of the whole Emma College ones that didn't get to the top two, so that's why I kind of made the combination. See the Manny pregnancy angle in season three and also bringing the dot down. That was the top two, so that's what happened there. All right, so this is the season two and six one that... I had three from season two, and then I added the Lakers to season six because that was the only mistake Emma made in that season. And as you can see, the Lakers thing took second to the whole abortion thing. I know tangling with Raj was bad in a sense, but in a way that, you know, it was kind of likely it wasn't going to make it to the top two. So this was the fifth poll that I like combined seasons. Obviously, Peter was going to definitely make this list. I didn't have four mistakes from season five. So that's why the Peter thing was kind of in the combination thing. It was easy to see that. And then, you know, controlling Manny and all that. And trying to control Sean in season three. I'm surprised I didn't make it. But then the Kelly one was part of the college storylines. And then this poll comes season one, her four big mistakes. You know, the cheerleading, the whole sweet cheek kids thing about the the TV views. And then, of course, the catfishing, which, I like, a lot of people did not like on that list. But, you know, I just had to fit it in because, you know, you never know. And, of course, the big mistake of her with Armstrong. So that's what happened. And, of course, you know, the poll I talked about, the three moments with 50 plus. It was, like, almost unbelievable like this really was just wide open and all that. So I decided to put all three within the top 10 round. Well, first place got to the top six. And then I said, you know what? We'll do the other two to make it top 10. It just makes sense. All right. So now that you have seen what has happened. So there were two polls, one to six, seven to 12 ranking polls. The, se the seven to 12 ranking poll got 149 votes. So here's what happened. Um, well, I, it's a top 10, but I got to give the, honor, the two honorable mentions to the ones that did not make the list. And you'll see the poll thing at the end of the episode. You'll see the polls and how that happened. But as is, um, the Emma Mistakes poll from 7 to 12. So here were the two that were not in the top 10, who didn't get a top 10. Uh, four people voted for the crusade against cheerleading in season one because it took runner-up in the season one thing. I hoped it was the catfishing. Well, that was one I got properly chastised because they said that, you know, Emma, how was that a mistake? He lured her. Yeah, but Emma fell for it, and she did admit her mistake and all that. 
Now, I know one major one that didn't make it was season three, trying to find her dad. And a lot of people probably think that finding Shane was a mistake. No, Emma was just trying to find her father. And I mean, Spike could have easily told Emma about Shane and Emma would have not thought about Shane. But anyway, the Crusade versus cheerleading in season one was when Manny becomes a cheerleader. And, you know, Paige says, you know, spirit squad. And we're going to have boys on our team so it, people can't call it sexist. Although Emma does a op-ed in the newspaper saying how bad it was and that cheerleaders are bindles. A lot of people probably thought that it was sour grace that Emma didn't get in the spirit squad and Manny did. You know, but Emma was just being the way she was. I mean, yeah, in a sense, Emma did screw up in a way. Well, sexism is not gender thing. That page was wrong because sexism doesn't mean gender. It just means other things. So logically, you know, Paige and Manny try to ruin Emma's op-ed. Emma does apologize to Manny in the end. And also missing out on the top 10 with nine votes was the anti-Lakers sentiment in season six. I'm actually surprised that that didn't make the top 10. But anyway, in season six, Manny and Emma were throwing a party for Liberty at Emma's house with Spike and Snake gone. And Lakehurst, in that rivalry with Degrassi, sent some people around to cause trouble for Degrassi. Of course, you know, JT was dating Mia. But Degrassi people kicked them out. That was supposed to be the end of it. And then JT is told by Toby to go find Liberty because JT realizes he needs Liberty. I think in a way JT was only going to do that for Liberty because maybe he thought if he dumped off Mia for Liberty, then that stupid rivalry wouldn't, will probably die off. So he goes looking for Liberty. Drake Lampley and Johnny DeMarco are there peeing on his car. JT basically makes a comment and then stabbed in the aorta by Drake. Johnny's shocked and all that. JT is bleeding out in a sense. Liberty finds them. I'm surprised Liberty actually came back to the party. But anyway, her primal screen and then we find out that he died. That Toby, I mean, Toby finds out that JT's dead. And it was just shocking. A couple of episodes later, we find out about Emma's problems because when Manny actually is told by her mom that she can go home after being kicked out in season five, because of the whole situation, Emma feels terrible. She probably feels like she's losing an ally. She tries to talk to Manny about the whole JT situation, but she gets blown off. They were supposed to have a girls' night together, but Manny blows that off, and Emma starts to get a little anxious, and then Emma, you know, loses it when she finds out Lake Chris is coming for a cheer competition at their school, and we're dancing on JT's grave. Although Snake and Manny try to tell her that this will help school spirit and all that, and it's too late to cancel because of logistics. Fair enough. I get it. But also pissing off Emma was Manny dating Damien, who's the student council president of Lakers, and who, I believe, me was it Mia, who said that Damien had a connection with Drake Lampley, had a connection with Drake Lampley, not like to hurt JT, but anyway, and then Manny is pissed off at Emma. Emma says, I had to do the right thing. She gets a month's worth of detention. Snake basically tells Emma that I know it's hard to grieve, but this anger is not about Lakers. This is about Manny moving on. And, you know, in a sense, like, you know, Emma's afraid she's going to lose Manny and all that. Emma does come out to Snake saying she's mad that everyone's walking past JT and all that. But there's a good chance that her PTSD from season four, which wasn't really talked about much after the Rick Murray situation, May have led to Emma maybe suffering some kind of depression thing. But you got to remember, this effect, JT died steps from her house. Who wouldn't be freaked by that? Fortunately, though, Manny and Emma become friends again. So anyway, that is the end of that thing. Uh, okay, so here we go. Mm. All right, so number 10 with 30 votes was controlling Manny in season 5. Now, I know what you're thinking that, you know, season five was bad and then her dating Peter and all that. But this is different than dating Peter. And yes, dating Peter is in the top six. But the fact of the matter is that controlling Manny. Now, 
This comes on the heels of her finding out that Spike and Snake have to spend time apart because of Spike's treat with, I'm sorry, Snake's treat with Hatzalakos. So anyway, Emma is forced to do more stuff around the house with Snake not around. Fortunately, Snake does win Spike back. Well, he talks to Emma about winning Spike back. And Emma feels great about, you know, keeping Spike and Snake together. But Emma, for some strange reason, that that's not good enough. And when she decides to try to help Manny lose weight for a role, you know, it was supposed to be harmless. Manny was supposed to lose a few pounds, but Emma put Manny on a strict diet and all that. She she went along too because, you know, Emma was trying to show support. Manny loses the weight, but then Emma is pissed off that, you know, Manny's going back on her work to lose weight. But Emma is just taking control. And Manny says, I can't do this anymore. You're scaring me. So then Emma decides to do the eating disorder on her own and all that. And all that. Fortunately, though, Emma does get help for that ED. And no, it's not the other ED, guys. But yeah, controlling Manny in general. I feel that this, alongside taking Manny in, in season five, may have led to Emma realizing things and taking control of Manny, being coming a friend, saying that, you know what, if you don't support me and all that, then I'm going to suggest that you leave and all that. So I think it was just some kind of control issue with Emma. And yeah, the Rick Murray situation had something to do with it. Because that was a situation she couldn't control. I will talk about that more when I get to the top six. All right, so number nine on the list with 33 votes in that little poll was her entire college arc. Remember when I said that I decided to combine some losers into one? That's what I did. So, of course, when you look at the poll stuff and then you know about the three major things about college, getting Manning and Liberty in the same dorm, being placed just to get friends, and controlling Kelly, I decided to combine those three into one because her entire college arc, and it would make sense. You know, kind of thinking that, okay, well, I need something to make a top 12. But it turned out to be number nine, which was good. Yeah, her entire college arc was terrible in a sense. I mean, when they start off in college, she finds out that Liberty and Manny are in the same dorm. Okay, but then she's not. And Emma pulls strings to get Manny and Liberty in the same dorm as them, her. I think Emma just needed the control. And, you know, she could have made friends. She could have made fast friends with other people, but she couldn't. And then the whole Blaze situation in the middle of season eight, when she's found to be bland and blonde and all that, Emma's like, I'm not that blonde. Emma figures she needs to make friends and all that, trying to make herself good. So when she finds out about make pot brownies, she decides to bake them and, you know, do all this stuff. And then she gets fast friends and all that, and she feels vindicated. Unfortunately, the one girl has a epileptic seizure while being under the influence. She didn't take her medication. So the school freaks out and basically wants the pot out and all that. Emma realizes the whole thing and tries to tell Kelly off or try to tell Kelly to burn the evidence. But nope, Kelly gets caught with it. He's kicked off dorm. Thankfully, he's allowed to, co um, to stay at school. Emma wants to take the fall, but Kelly says, no, no, you'll get expelled. And of course, you know, by Holiday Road in season nine, we find out that Emma's been deteriorating. Her grades are not that great. She's chasing friends instead of grades. And the worst part is, after the Hollywood movie, Emma and Emma loses both Liberty and Manny. Well, Liberty did pre-law and Manny to Hollywood. And Emma's like, I have nobody. So she's just trying to find somebody to hang out around her. And she controls Kelly in such a way that Kelly's not too happy with it. And Emma scolds him for trying to trying a burger. Kelly's dad gives Kelly a job a offer he can't refuse. He goes back to the Yukon to work for him. I think that Kelly's dad kind of figured that Emma was pulling the strings in the relationship. So Emma feels upset. She does her little recycle project. She was supposed to do it with Kelly, but she has to do it by herself. And then she inadvertently tells everyone about how bad she is at school and all that. And that college can break you down and all that. Spike and Snake do chide her a little bit, but Basically, yeah, Emma needs to learn to do better. Emma does tell people that she needs to, um, she probably doesn't need a guy. 
But we all know that was bullshit. And ironically enough, guess what number eight is? Burning the dot down in season nine and the season nine movie and marrying Spinner. I should say that. I should have said that. But anyway, yeah, she made a mistake. Like, she was working at the dog, for God's sake. It's weird. It's like, Emma's a vegetarian. She hasn't tried meat in like 10 years, at, allegedly. But yeah, she uses a sandwich grill and it burns the dog down. It was like, how does that happen? So anyway, Emma makes a mistake. She and Jay try to get Spinner's hopes up and go to Niagara Falls. They end up getting married. They want to break it off, but then they find out they really want to be with each other, Emma and Spinner. So Spemma is born, and, you know, they renew their fowls on the beach. So the spike and snake, and, you know, the whole thing happens and all that. Manny comes back in Emma's life. You know, it was weird. And then, you know, they said that they'd probably divorce later on. But then in Throwback Thursday, they're still together and buying a house together. And actually coming close with Snake. So, yeah, so, yeah, make it, that's a big mistake on her part. But, like, she had nobody around her. And she said she didn't need a guy to make her happy. Bullshit. All right, so number seven on the list with 39 votes who won that 7 to 12 poll is going to the ravine and getting the social disease. Now, I admit I botched it. I was supposed to put the third place um, one in season four within the 7 to 12 because I decided to make both the top two guys to be in the top six. But then I decided on the last second to say, you know what? Two of them are are close to each other and maybe that you know i kind of think that emma doesn't deserve that rafine thing doesn't deserve to be top six so yeah i have to go more into detail when i talk about the season four thing but the short form is that emma you know was melancholy she was losing her touch the rick situation did affect her i mean gun to her head affected her and she couldn't control it and instead of asking for help she should have People just walked on eggshells around her. Then Jay comes up creepily on Emma. Emma goes with Jay, probably as a link to Sean, because, you know, she probably wanted to be with Sean. After all, Sean saved her butt from Rick's gun. And then, you know, she ends up being with Jay and becoming a little bit of an aggressor. Manny and Snake think this is not Emma at all. Try to calm her down, try to make her things. But then Emma realizes after a gonorrhea attack and Alex and Amy are gone from the play that... You know, she's caught it, and she's a bad person. People ignore her on the stage of the school, on the school play, and, you know, she tells Jay that iconic line, you gave me a social disease. Although Jay says, I thought you were pure. Manny and Emma's like, I don't feel pure. And then, in a sense, strangely enough, the gonorrhea attack helped Emma get better because Emma snapped out of her zombie Emma face. And all that. And Emma realizes she needs help. So, yeah. And then she's without a guy till Peter comes in the picture. But you get the picture, I hope. Oh, anyway. So that's that. Uh, okay. Time for the top six. The top six poll got 249 votes. And one of them got more than 50% of the vote. I don't know how the percentage properly, and I don't want to bore you. All right. Here we go. Number six with 15 votes was handling Manny's abortion season three. So, yeah, so numbers four, five, and six were really close. But anyway, number six is handling Manny's potential abortion. So, as we all know, Manny was in a love triangle with Craig and Ashley. Craig impregnates Manny. It's unknown if it was the time that Craig and Manny had sex on Emma's bed. Well, Emma was still at the rave trying to get to Chris. But, anywho... Manny's pregnant. She doesn't know what to do. She tells Spike, you know, Spike being a teen mom, and Spike says, I think your parents will be okay with it. And Manny says, I don't think so, because my cousin got pregnant and got shipped to the Philippines, back to a convent. Uh -huh. So, anyway, um, Emma is not too sure about it, but Emma wants Ma um, Manny and Craig to babysit her infant brother, Jack. They do a bad job, and they realize this is going to be the, the death of it. I mean, Manny was happy to have that baby, and Craig too, but Ashley spills the secret. I mean, Ashley was kind of vindicated in a way. I mean, Ashley was upset that Craig was Manny. I mean, who wouldn't? Anyhow. 
So anyway, handling that the Maddie wants to have an abortion, Emma's like, there's great adoption agencies. You can't do this. And, you know, she's upset with it. And then, you know, Manny tells Craig about the abortion plan and Craig is upset by it. Now, Craig does not tip his hand by the fact that he probably wants this baby because his family has gone. He doesn't have a mom. She died of some unknown disease. She, he doesn't have his dad, although he was abusive towards him. Like, he doesn't think of Joey as his family sometimes, which is kind of crappy. But the fact of the matter is that, you know, he was not upset. Emma butts in and tells Craig, I agree with everything, but it's Manny's body and her choice. And if she wasn't my best friend, I'd be pissed. And Manny's shocked that Emma protected her. Saying that it's Manny's right to choose. I mean, Emma is anti-abortion. I get it. Like, Emma was almost aborted herself, and Jack was almost aborted, and Spike made that mistake about things. That will be covered in another one of the top six topics, I should say. Don't want to get too far into it. But the simple fact is that, yeah, it was strange how she protected Manny. Now, I always thought that, you know, I knew that Manny and Emma were not friends because Manny was upset. She didn't want to be friends with a prude princess. And Emma called Manny the school slut. But the simple fact is that, you know, I thought they weren't friends. I thought that Emma probably blinked first and needed Manny as a friend. And that's why she was protecting Manny. But then again, people said that, no, they were close. And all that. They were talking to each other. I think that they both realized they hurt each other. And a lot of people say that that was a mistake for Emma calling Manny the school slut. But no, it wasn't. I mean, after all, Emma's feelings were hurt. And, you know, Emma was trying to protect Manny. You know, the friendship was weird. I should have just said mistake, you know, mishandling her friendship with Manny. Fuck, I should have made that in the top ten and all that. Should have made that a whole thing. Now I fucked things up. But, unfortunately, you saw the evidence, so I can't go back on it. All right. Number five on the list. Oops. I could do it with this hand. Number five with 16 votes was trying to prevent Chris and Liberty from dating season four. Now, the season four premiere had, you know, the whole thing with Paige trying to get revenge on Dean for raping her and also Craig getting the money from his dad to buy a guitar. But then a throwaway line was that, you know, May, um, Emma really feels that she and Chris broke up. Toby reveals that him and Kendra broke up. And Liberty says she and Towers broke up. You know, Towers, the silent guy that was in Candy Bandits. Season three. But anyway, yes. Yeah, so then the third episode comes in. Or second, if you believe that the first episode was a one was a one hour, but they've split it into two, so it's the third episode. In the in the subplot to the whole school election thing that Manny, I mean, no, sorry, that Alex and Mark are running for student council president. Um, Manny notices that Liberty is going gaga over Chris and all that because you know Emma and Chris are broken up, and you know. Manny at first decides, you know what, I'll help Emma if she wants to go back to Chris, making probably thinking that Emma made a giant boo-boo by getting rid of Chris and all that. It's actually unknown who broke up with who, but based on the evidence, I say Emma broke up with Chris. I'll get more to that later on, but anyhow, so Manny says, I can help you get Chris back, and then Emma says, I really don't want Chris back, huh? I just, you know, if Chris and Liberty are dating, what does that say about me? How are people going to react to me? And Manny's like, wow, I can't believe it. You said some dumb stuff, Emma, like this whole abortion thing. I can't believe it. Yeah, I was like, that's uncharacteristic. And, you know, I'll get more into that near soon. But anyhow, Manny tells Liberty about the plan for Emma to break up Chris and Liberty. And, you know, Emma tries to talk to Liberty, saying that, I guess I missed Chris. And Liberty says, I won't miss you. Go to hell, and all that. So that's when Emma loses Manny and Liberty as friends and basically does some stupid stuff. But before I get to that, let's get the facts. Is that, you know, if Emma, yeah, Emma should never have thought that way. It was like, 
it was puzzling. It was like, if Chris and Libby break, um, are dating, that doesn't affect Emma at all. How does that affect Emma? It just doesn't make sense. It doesn't pass the sniff test. In a sense that maybe, you know, Emma, th you know, someone said, when I talked about that, someone said that, you know, Emma probably was jealous of how Manny was getting boys with her look in season three, and Emma needed to, to change her personality in season four. Great mistake. But I still feel to this day that Emma w wanted Chris only to make Sean jealous because, you know, Sean was with Amy and the candy and the candy bands, if you will. And Emma was upset by that. I think Emma wanted to be with Chris desperately. Although Emma did show some eyes towards Chris at the start of season three. Forgot about that, but yeah. And then, you know, she almost lost Chris because of her pettiness towards Sean and the Candy Bandits. And I kind of think that should have happened. Take Emma down a peg or two. But the simple fact is that, you know, Emma probably was, after finding out that Sean was dating Ellie and probably, and not part of the Candy Bandits anymore, that Emma didn't need to use Chris to get on Sean's nerves. But, you know, it's a weird fury. So, of course, I say, trying to prevent Chris from Liberty from dating season four, she did some stupid stuff. Well, that leads us, ironically, to number four. And number four was the whole anti-Rick campaign in season four. Despite the fact that, you know, it wasn't all Emma's fault for doing this whole anti-Rick campaign, like Paige should be, get some blame for that whole anti-Rick campaign. I still say that Emma, in a way, kind of started this whole mess. Although it was not her intention. She unintentionally started it, more like. So, of course, after losing Manny and Liberty as friends, she actually bumps into Paige and her friend group to start that to start uh, Mercy Street. And they say that Rick's back at the school. Remember Terry McGregor? He's the guy who put her in the hospital with a coma. And Emma says, we need to do something about it. So, of course, Marco and Alex tried to do something about it with Radish, and then we get a delete. It was typically a deleted scene and all that. And then Emma decides to push the envelope and try to prevent Rick from going anywhere, saying that we don't want him at this school to Radish. Radish says, it's not one of your silly crusades and all that. Stay out of it. Which, of course, makes me feel that he's upset that Emma has to crusade about everything. And, you know, she kind of personally attacked this character in season two, Fight for Your Right. Now, I'm not saying that Emma or Radish were in the right. They both were in the wrong. I say it was, they were both in the wrong. Radish were trying to project to Emma that he runs the school and all that. And basically, unintentionally pushing Emma's buttons and making her so fucking triggered, it hurt. And Emma for pushing the whole non-GMO foods and the, uh, the GMO foods thing and the um, right to protest. I mean, she did have a right to do stuff, but... You know, she pushed the envelope too far. She got tr too triggered and too into this. Yes. Regardless, Emma tries to help Paige out when Paige says, there's a monster in the school and nobody cares. And Emma's like, we'll make someone care about it. And then she completely finds Manny and Liberty in the bathroom that says, I'm going for a latte. Was it? I said green tea, but it's wrong. A, a frap or a lat latte with Paige at the dot. Have fun with your hot tub. Aha. So she's just basically telling Manny and Liberty that she doesn't need them. Well, I say that was a mistake. Anyway, so she does an orange ribbon campaign to bring people into domestic violence and stuff. That was her intention. Although the students did take it as a way to get Rick out because he was the big guy who domestically who did domestic violence and all that. I mean, I think Rick could have helped himself out by apologizing for all his shit, but he didn't. But the simple fact was that, you know, Paige was not too pleased. Emma gets a check from Rick for over $500 for the cause. Alex rips it up. Emma rip, tries to rip Alex a new one, but Alex says, I've dealt with domestic violence because of my mom's ex-boyfriends. Uh, ex like, that's fine and all that. She should have portrayed that better, but it just made her in a villain. Emma is told not to have sympathy towards Rick. Emma trips Rick up to try to prove her loyalty to Paige's friend group, and then Paige's friend group beats up Rick, thinking that Rick's going to go after Emma. But that's not the case, and, you know, Emma stops the whole 
beating up on Rick thing. And then they said, your cause is over, Emma. No cause is worth this. So basically, Emma's ignored by Paige's friend group. And she tells Rick that she only did it because it was the right thing to do. He kind of brushes it off. Paige, Emma does tell Rick, they're not ready for you to come back. They're not going to forgive you. They will someday. All that. But yeah, like Emma, Emma, I can understand her philosophy. Like, it's like with Manny, like she's trying to protect Manny from herself, but she goes overboard with that fury. It's kind of like this, like the domestic violence thing, because, you know, Emma's the cause girl. She plays up to her cause girl 4K and all that, trying to get friends. It was obvious that she wanted to be in a friend group because she lost Manny and Liberty. And she was trying to pretend like losing Manny and Liberty meant nothing to her. But it backfired at her. She lost Paige's friend group. And the only people she really hung up was the quiz bowl thing with JT, not JT, why am I thinking? Toby, Heather Sinclair, Jimmy, and Rick. So Rick easily had Emma in his clutches and all that. Like, it just spoke to how Emma basically lost a lot of people. And Paige, I feel, did push things by spreading rumors about Emma and all that. I think she basically told the school about don't trust Emma and all that. And people were upset with Emma and just ignored her. And that's why Emma was easily put in the quiz bowl group and all that. She did get many Liberty back, but I guess they were concerned about her. All right, so that diatribe side, let's go to number three on the list. Number three was mistaking Armstrong's affection towards Liberty in season one. This was one of the first major moves. I think it was, what, the sixth or seventh episode in that Emma sees Armstrong put his arms around Liberty. And Emma is in short. So she talks to Manny saying that what's going on. Manny says, oh, it's probably just nothing. But unbeknownst to Emma is that Terry hears this. Terry tells Hazel, Hazel tells Paige, and the school knows about this, and the school investigates Armstrong. Emma decides to step in to the investigation and tell Radge what she saw and all that. Thankfully, though, Armstrong's not in trouble. Liberty's not in trouble. Emma saves the day, in a sense. But Liberty then is angry at Emma. But then Liberty tells Emma that he was consoling me because of my dyscalculia. Huh? My terrible stuff of math. But you're so smart. It doesn't matter. I have issues with that. And then Liberty bashes Emma by saying that, go back to saving the rainforest in Wales because as a best friend, you suck. Well, that kind of foreshadowed things. But what people don't realize is that things were bad for Emma twofold. Number one was, you know, Emma was blamed for this whole rumor mill and all that. But Emma was just quietly telling Manny what she thought and, you know, Terry eavesdropped, which was funny because Emma got eavesdropped and she usually eavesdrops on a lot of people. But the other big thing about this was the simple fact that it was not tipped. Like Emma didn't tip her hand that, you know, the whole Armstrong thing possibly was an after effect of, you know, being catfished by that guy in the first episode. So she had some concerns about affection and all that. And she probably was just upset over how she got catfished and was worried about Liberty being hurt and, you know, it didn't go over so well. All right, so number two with 42 votes was going over Spike's head about to tell Snake about the abortion, the potential abortion season two. Yeah, of course, in season two poll, you saw about, you know, the one option about Emma being upset over the fact that Spike was dating Snake. Well, Spike and Snake actually had a little bit of a fling when Emma was a toddler. But the simple fact is that Spike and, you know, her parent, her mom's dating her teacher? What student would like that? And I did that for an unpopular opinion recently. But the simple thing is that, you know, Emma starts to calm down and expect and accept Snake into her life, which is great. But the fact of the matter is that White Wedding caused Emma to have one of her most triggered episodes ever. I say Fight for Your Right also is one of her most triggered episodes ever, but still, White Wedding happens. Emma has a lot of bad things come for her. Sean's actually coming to the wedding, even though that Sean and Emma broke up. Her hair sucks because she forgot to um, deal with it. Well, Sp Spike forgot to deal with it, and there was a terrible cake. So Emma was fuming over this whole 
problem in the first place. And then Spike finds out she's pregnant, confides in Emma, and Emma says, that's great, I'm going to have a new sibling. And Emma, and then Spike says, I just don't want a second mistake. <gasps> mistake. That's a mistake, because that gets Emma really triggered. And season two, Emma was the most triggered character ever, fighting on it. But the simple fact is that, you know, it just didn't make sense. And, you know, Emma's fretting over it. What should she tell Snake? Manny says that, you know, Emma, stay away from this. You know, this isn't your mistake. And then I think Emma says, butt out, Manny, or something like that. So Emma decides to go over to the bachelor party at Joey's to tell Snake about this whole thing. And, and basically inadvertently gets JT and Toby in trouble with Joey because they were trying to watch the strippers and all that. But they fell asleep with the video equipment and all that. So they got in trouble. And JT basically, JT and um, um, Toby basically said, if we weren't ushers at this wedding, we'd be grounded till time ends or something like that. <laughs> but yeah, so she goes to S Snake. Now, Emma definitely made a mistake. I mean, but the problem with Emma is that, you know, it's like a tick that wouldn't settle until notice. It's like Sheldon in that one episode giving Leonard that itchy sweater because it reminds him of a tick that, you know, Sheldon doesn't solve, a problem that Sheldon can't solve and all that. It just, it's that tick in his brain. But for that, it's like, you know, Emma is like, you know, she has to do something about it. You know, Manny shites her on it later on, but Emma says, I needed to do what was right. And a good friend wouldn't say that to me. And Emma goes off the rails and turns into Mount Edna. You know, Mount Edna, but Mount Edna. So, yeah. And, you know, Spike and Snake almost don't get married, and Emma feels she ruined the wedding. But, fortunately for them, Spike and Snake decide to get married, not in traditional clothes, which was weird. But, you know, they did it. And Emma feels great about it. And Sean comes back. And that's when Emma and Sean are back together. But by far, number one, I figured it was going to be number one, but with 133 out of 249 folks, over 50%, was dating Peter, despite what happened to Manny in season five. I figured this was going to win. I had a hunch. I picked it to be my personal pick. There were some comments. Someone said, Living Gray says, I want to make extra accounts to vote for everyone. Oh, lol. Someone says, if I was Manny, I would have dropped Emma ASAP and not turned back. Capital Study said, organizing the whole anti-abuse was why it was number one. Emma may have went well, but it went out of control when actual school buddies took over. And people said, I'm telling you, Peter is going to win this competition. Yep, that's right. Okay, so here's what happens. So it's season five and the season premiere and Emma laments to Manny that, you know, she needs to find a boy because she hasn't had a relationship since Hurricane Sean blew through her emotional trailer park. That got me thinking, is she talking about season three when Sean left her for the candy bands or season four when Sean went back to Wasaga Beach to deal with his PTSD? And I think it's season four and all that. But regardless of that, she finds a boy named Peter and then does the famous line, if I can remember this right. Hi, Peter. I'm Degrassi. Welcome to Emma. And that was kind of funny and all that. So anyhow, that's what happens. And then she's spitting with Peter. Manny goes to a party with Emma and with Peter and Peter's smitten with Manny, and Manny says, no, you should be with Emma. And then Peter exposes Manny's flashing video to the school in exchange for her not giving $3,000 for his camera. $3,000 for a camera? That's pathetic. Manny does try to get the money back from her breast surgery because she wanted to be an actress and thought that it would be better, but no, didn't happen. So the fact of the matter is that Manny gets kicked out for not bowing down to her dad and all that. So she doesn't know what to do. She stays over at Emma's for a little bit. 
and then, you know, permanently in a sense, because Emma manages to get Manny to stay with her, kind of being guilty and all that. Peter gets in trouble, but get, just gets attention, no expulsion or anything. And we find out Peter is Hatzalako's son and all that, and everyone is just shocked. But then Emma, trying to get revenge porn, revenge and help Manny get revenge on Peter, actually falls in love with Peter's pictures and, you know, she fawns over him. So she has a behind a backdoor relationship with Peter, like a closed door relationship with Peter. But unfortunately, that almost gets blown out of water when they both find out that Snake and Hot Zacos are kissing. So basically, Manny, I mean, Emma and Peter's, well, Emma's stepfather and Peter's mom are getting together. It's like, whoa. So anyway, after that mess, Manny finds out from Emma that she's dating Peter. And it's like, that's repugnant. Why? Why? So yeah, so Emma blasts Peter in a little bit for uh, trying to fight on her eating disorder. But, you know, Pema is a thing in the end of season five and start of season six before Sean comes back in the picture and kind of ruins it. I think it was kind of done on purpose because people thought Pema was a bad idea and needed to end, and it did. And Emma falls for Sean. But dating Peter was weird and all that. It was like, you know, Peter did this to her best friend. I think in a way that she kind of was happy because now she got Manny in her clutches, which made her kind of you know, a clean friend and, of course, a clean girlfriend in a sense. I mean, her history after season four, being with Peter, being with Sean, being Damien and Kelly, hmm, just not fitting her. Nobody fit her category before she married Spinner. Now, find me on this all you want, but I feel that Emma was just trying to gain control in her life and, you know, she was trying to find a boy and maybe she felt in the back of her head that because she didn't really have friends and she really didn't have a boyfriend, that Rick was, she was easy prey for Rick and wanted to prevent a Rick type from getting her again. So she figured that she would have the boyfriend for protection and the, and her friends just to help her out with her problems. That's why Emma started becoming a clean friend and that's why Emma was starting to become a clean girlfriend. Rick had lots to do with that. I mean, the clean friend thing you could also say was the whole season six Lakers thing, too, which was a part of it. But, I mean, Emma in season five was just pathetic. Yeah, Danny Peter was a terrible thing in both the fact that this was beyond Emma's character and Peter was a dirtbag and all that. Although he was decent towards Mia and all that, but Mia left him for Paris and he fell flat and all that. So, yeah, fight me on it all you want. But that's how it goes, and that, those are Emma's 10 biggest mistakes. Like it or not. Anyway, I'm Jeff Diamond. Thanks for And just to show you proof of the whole thing, here were the poll results for both polls. So thank you for doing your Reddit. Please, and say goodbye.